Hey all, Ian from Eurogamer here with some brand new Splinter Cell Blacklist gameplay for your eyes only. Starting off with some snippets of an assault on a CIA safe house in Libya. What do we have in Benghazi? My contact is at a CIA safe house. They've detained a subject with intel on Guam, but no one gets to ask questions until they're done with them. Missions are now preceded by a loadout screen where it's possible to adapt Sam's gear for different environments and for different playstyles. Made, he's dead. We got more militia en route. Suffice you move out, sir. All right, I need options. Now would be good. First up, we're going to see a demonstration of a zipline kill. This kill has fueled Sam's mark and execute ability, which makes a return in Blacklist. And here we see Sam disposing of the body. The game now caters for the die-hard traditional Splinter Cell fans who love ghosting through levels, but will also appeal to those who started playing this series with conviction and have a slightly more aggressive stealth approach. It's Dragging enemies off ledges and pouncing lethally from the shadows rewards you with points towards a panther playstyle. Conversely, successfully bypassing a patrol nets you points that contribute towards your ghost total in any level. The two being totted up at mission's end to provide a little feedback into exactly how you went about your duties. What we're going to see next is Sam attracting a guard by switching off a light and then selecting a non-lethal takedown from an in-game menu. This will be invaluable in missions where casualties are not acceptable. What have we got here? Need help checking it out? I'm all right here. As usual, Sam works better in the dark. What the hell? Man. Cool, my friend. So, as you can see here, contrary to popular belief, Blacklist is largely a return to the smarter, more covert style of the original Xbox games and not the mega violent outing last year's E3 appearance suggested. Here's a great example of a brutal mark and execute. Plan using these carefully because out and out assaults that have you relying solely on brute force are the toughest path to victory. There are two new enemy types in the game, snipers and canines. The dogs will sniff you out, alerting enemies to your presence as well as attacking. But as you can see, Rover here isn't shockproof. Classic doggy takedown. Everyone, spread out! Mark and Execute allows you to tag enemies before deftly downing the lot with a single button press. They're integrated much more smoothly into the gameplay for Blacklist, meaning these moments are now a quick pause in the action rather than a full stop. OK, on to London and an abandoned mill on the rain-lashed banks of the Thames for some very dodgy cockney dialogue. But first, another stop to change gear at the game's loadout screen. It's also possible to upgrade equipment through an in-game economy that's new to the series. No need to worry though, because thankfully microtransactions are explicitly ruled out for Blacklist. Hooray! What? You get a little wet, you think you're gonna melt. It's slippery out here. The mill's graphics are incredibly detailed. Water runs down the crap-stained exterior walls you scale to infiltrate the area, while a mildly convincing London skyline twinkles in the horizon. Much more convincing than the core blimey accents anyway. Now shut your gob and get... Shut your gob? Ha! For true authenticity, you should have said shut your cake hole. Yeah, right. 
Make sure you subscribe to Eurogamer's YouTube channel by clicking on the bottom annotation for more Splinter Cell Blacklist coverage in the months leading up to its release, as well as exclusive gameplay footage from loads more of 2013's biggest games, all coming very soon. Also, for more detailed intel on the game, clicking on the top annotation will take you straight to Martin Robinson's preview over on Eurogamer.net. Thanks for watching.